If you've been at least hanging around the S60 world in the last few months, you can't have escaped the larger-than-life semi-fictional character that is the self-styled genius Stavros. An artefact of Nokia marketing, no doubt, but he's hilarious and has introduced the world to a new art form, position art. The idea is to walk around landscapes and cities with a GPS-enabled smartphone, in this case the Nokia N82, with the onboard software automatically tracking your position graphically and tracing out a logo or picture. Well, it looked like fun, so I thought I'd have a go too. As you can see, I am not Stavros. I don't have the grease, the accent or the suit. I do have the glasses and I do have the trusty N82 smartphone tool. So I'm attempting to create my own work of position art. Let's see how I get on. So here we go, in this case attempting a simple phone sketch using some local roads. The nitty gritty is handled by Nokia's sports tracker software, either built into most devices or a free add-on, which logs the GPS position as you go and shows you on screen how the track looks so far. It also shows you stuff like kilometres walked, speeds etc, but that's for another day. Here's the track I ended up with. Sports Tracker then exports to lots of things, including a KML file for upload to Google Earth. Here's the track overlaid onto its satellite map. Hmm, not anywhere near as good as the master of position art, and note how my actually walked path was mistracked in this corner by the GPS. So I have completed my own work of position art. Stavros, I have a question for you. My own work of art has jiggly bits where the GPS wasn't quite accurate enough to tell which side of the road I was on, which corner I was taking. How do you do it? How are your works of art so clean? Is it in fact that you are a genius or are you cheating? Also, why is it always sunny where you are? Here it's raining! If you're planning on having a go yourself, here are some tips. Attempt your art on a larger scale than me, trying to use the position change between different sides of the same road, however accurate the GPS just wasn't reliable enough in the end. You'll need to do a Stavros and think citywide, with multiple streets framing your art, or head for a big park, but that's kind of cheating. Don't try and ad-lib your position art, print out some street maps beforehand and work out your route with a highlighter. As with the Etch-a-Sketch toy, you'll have to be creative to do anything complicated. For any significant piece of position art, take some photos on the way round. If nothing else, it'll prove you actually did the walk. Be prepared for a little creative photoshopping of the final track if you want to match Stavros. Cheating? Well, kind of. Still fun, though. Whether you're a Windows Mobile user as here, or favour an S60 device perhaps, I'm sure that heading off to search for something on Google is a regular occurrence. You've probably got it set as your top bookmark or homepage. So what better news than that the Big G has released native search utilities for both operating systems. I'll cover the poorer relation first. On Windows Mobile, Microsoft's live search box does much the same thing, but Google search is still cool since it's much more popular. Your smartphone's browser is used to do the heavy lifting, but with a search box on your standby screen, you can type in your query directly and press enter, and a connection is made to your 3G connection, if you're not already online, and search results are shown in the mobile version of Google. Under S60, Google search is even better, since it saves you time by making the internet connection in the background while you're typing. On devices with a pencil key, Google search is triggered from this, otherwise just stick it as a standby screen shortcut, making this the hands-down fastest way to get search results. As promised, here's the other Samsung S60 powered smartphone, the i550. Styled as a, a business-focused black candy bar and enviably thin, only 13mm, the i 550s spec list is top draw. There's Wi-Fi, 3.5G data, GPS, a 2.6 inch screen, a 3 megapixel camera, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and 80 megabytes of free RAM. Quite a spec. The i550 is molded in plastic but with a stylish metal keypad. In addition to the usual S60 keys there are shortcut buttons for web, uh, for GPS positioning, there's no navigation software bundled by default in this, the imported version at least, and one button for music player, real player and the built-in FM radio. The keypad keys are in retro calculator style, as on the Nokia N82, but they work well enough and are clearly labelled, at least, in white on black. The main display is also clear, at least indoors, but it does reflect quite badly outdoors. In between the two function key blocks is the single biggest innovation by Samsung, a trackball instead of a D-pad. When the i550 is on, it glows a sexy blue, as here. When the device is charging, it turns a fiery red. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, there's now no longer a way to press up and hold or down and hold 
from rewind fast forwarding, music player or real player. In fact, it turns out you can use obscure keypad keys as substitutes, but it's not as intuitive as using a D-pad. A bigger problem is that when you nudge a trackball in a direction, you expect the highlight to move in that direction. So far, so good. When you want to move further, you spin the trackball faster and with more momentum. But the highlight on the i550 screen still only moves a single step. It's very frustrating whenever anything cursor intensive comes along, such as uh, moving down an options menu or scrolling down a web page. Working around the i550's frame, there's the now obligatory micro SD card slot with a tethered cover. Up and down volume buttons, a 3.5mm headphone socket also with a tethered cover, power on and off, the proprietary Samsung serial and USB connector with a sliding cover and the camera button. The back sees a rubber effect battery cover and a basic 3 megapixel camera lens with LED flash and a small aiming mirror. The basic S60 interface should be pretty familiar by now but there's a certain sense of something being missing without all the Nokia add-ons such as download, share online, podcasting, location tagger and so on. I've tried downloading several Nokia utilities separately and installing them on the i550 via memory card but they, they all fail a certificate check on the device so that's a shame. The camera module in the i550 captures video at less than stellar 352 by 288 pixels by 15 frames a second with very tinny audio. So the inclusion of a, a full video editor is both welcome and a bit puzzling. The 3 megapixel camera produces average photos, but the cheap shutter button means that there's just no control over when you take each shot. You want a shot, you, you press the button, it focuses, and then three seconds later a shot is taken, whether it's what you still wanted or not. It seems as though the, the camera was a bit of an afterthought on the business-focused i550. Music playback was good, at least with the proprietary headset included that plugs into the serial port here. There's no fancy equalisation electronics as on the i450 I showed in the previous show, but the dedicated multimedia and music shortcut key does at least mean you can get to music player easily. There, there's also the aforementioned 3.5mm jack in case you want to plug in your own headphones or use an FM radio transmitter or other audio accessory. Getting music tracks onto the 140 megabytes of internal flash or micro SD was easy with full Windows Media Player sync compatibility and USB 2 speeds although I experienced a file glitch when trying to copy files on manually from Windows Vista. Go figure. Video playback included H.264 compatibility, but at quite a low frame rate, there's no fancy hardware acceleration on the i550. The second Samsung added application is a licensed copy of Voice Signal, a voice-activated launcher. It worked well to dial phone numbers, look up a specific contact or launch an application, and with no training needed. There's no dedicated activation button, by the way. Voice signal needs a long press on zero on the standby screen. Although there's Wi-Fi in the i550, there's no Wi-Fi scanning function on the active standby screen or search for WLAN function in the OS, meaning that a user has to be pretty knowledgeable about S60 to delve into the bowels of settings and get connected that way. That's a shame. Another area where Nokia's experience and add-ons make a big difference. It's great to see GPS included here, although my grey import i550 didn't come with any mapping or navigation software. The GPS button, as here, was hard-coded to the S60 GPS Data mini-app, so I loaded up Google Maps for mobile instead, which worked fine. It's not clear exactly where the GPS aerial is located on the i550, but I'd rate its sensitivity as a roughly equivalent to that in the Nokia N95, a not that brilliant. While out and about, the GPS fix did get lost a few times. As with the Samsung i450, Nokia Maps won't install on the i550, but there are plenty of other S60 and Java navigation solutions and I'd expect most of these to work properly here. Also working properly were Yahoo Go, included in the i550's firmware, curiously, Frozen Bubble, Y Browser, Magimix, Calcium, Best Taskman, uh, MTube, the YouTube player, didn't work though, and Google's auto detection of the quite rare i550 meant that I couldn't install the Java Gmail client. A small application sample, admittedly, but I'd guess that the majority of S60 software will work fine here, though certainly not all. Coming to the i550 from the well-supported, cosy world of Nokia, I have a few concerns about support here. Samsung are notoriously bad at thinking of the UK, a prime market for their S60 smartphones, so most owners will be buying this device blind, with no opportunity to try the device first, no obvious technical support, and little chance of new firmware to fix the inevitable bugs. 
add in that you'll have to set the device up from scratch for connectivity and work through a number of application compatibility issues and you have a recipe for a real headache and you'll have to do without all the useful S60 extras from Nokia. Finally, tack on the trackball oddities, the poor contrast outdoors and the appalling camera shutter button. And I have to conclude that the Samsung i550 is really only for S60 diehards.